So, uh, please kill me. So the guy says, I stood beside him and killed him. Because I knew that after he'd fallen, you know, run himself with a sword, he couldn't survive. Then I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm. I brought them here to, to you, my Lord. And then David and all his men with him took hold of their clothes and tore them. And they mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the army of the Lord and for the nation of Israel because they had fallen by the sword. They wept. And then David turns around and said, you killed Saul? He said, yep. And then David said, kill this guy. And they cut him down right where he stood. He says, how dare you? How dare you lay a hand against him? Oh man, how do you get like that? He so loved the guy despite everything he was doing to him. That when he died, he was grief stricken and killed the guy who killed him. Now I got to tell you, if I'm running for my life from some dude who is trying to kill me and they come and say, he's dead, he's dead, I wouldn't cry. I'd say, ding dong, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Witch, oh witch, the wicked witch. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. I like to dance like Ed Grimley. You remember that, that cartoon? <laughs> but not him. He weeps. Apparently, I'm not as nice as David. <laughs> How do you get there? There are people who take offense at everything. Every little thing that is said to you, every little slight that comes your way, you take and you're wounded. And then you have to struggle. Oh, God, help me to forgive that guy. Pastor, it's so hard for me to forgive. Okay, good. How about you not get upset in the first place? Don't walk around with a chip on your shoulder. Don't walk around just, you stab me. I just dare you to stab me. And then you're like, ah, if you have sported me. Good grief. There's people. I just got an email from a guy this week explaining why I left the church because in the foyer, I said something to him that apparently was insensitive. Hello. Clearly, he had never talked to me before. <laughs> I don't know. I'm goofing around half the time. I get 18 million things in my head. If you come up to me and I'm not the most sensitive, literally, if you're a sensitive person, don't talk to me. <laughs> well, seriously. Talk to Joe. <laughs> talk to Bob. They're nice people. <laughs> you talk to me, that's, you're just asking for trouble. Why? Because I'm not the most sensitive guy in the world. I don't have time to absorb your troubles. Not that I don't like you, it's just I have the attention span of a fly. <laughs> Forty words into your thing, I'm thinking about what's on TV. I just, I'm still looking at you, but I'm not focusing anymore. It's bad. I'm a terrible listener. So he's so mad they leave the church. Really? I should be able to take a sword. If you were like this, I should be able to take a javelin and throw it at you and try and kill you. <laughs> Any response? I'll see you next week, Pastor. <laughs> right? right? I should get a little posse together, run around chasing, try to beat the snot out of you and say, praise the Lord, Pastor, I'll see you next week. <laughs> well, somebody down in the children's apartment said my kid was a poopy head. <laughs> well, maybe your kid is a poopy head. <laughs> I don't know. You're so wounded by that. You're so wounded because someone somewhere in the church said something to you and did something to you. And you're, oh, oh, oh. Stop! Paul writes these words. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And this one, it keeps no record of wrongs. Some of y'all, every little thing that happens to you, you write it down. This happened to me on this day and it was 23 degrees outside and the wind was out of the northeast at 12 miles an hour and I remember everything about that day. Really? No wonder 
you're so rotting up inside with anger and bitterness for the love of heaven. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. You should never miss a Sunday. <laughs> you have no idea what you're going to miss. <laughs> Proverbs 17, 9 says this, whoever would foster love covers an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. You can always tell people that are carrying wounds, they repeat it over and over again. You know what that guy did to me. You know what he did. And you tell it again. You find yourself telling the same thing over and over again to someone. You are in a bad place. Shut up. Stop it. Constantly reliving it. They did that. You're poisoning other people. And you other people. I don't understand it. It's amazing. There are a handful of people in the church who've been literally offended for whatever reason. That I understand. What I don't understand is the 102 people they drag with them. You get upset because of what somebody else said. Pastor, sat on the poopy head. And you're mad about that? How about you talk to the pastor, see if I really said he was a poopy head? Because if I did, I'll tell you. <laughs> but at least find out. Goodness gracious, taking wounds and offenses and upset and oh, 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 oh. Every little wound. What? What do you got to do to get to a place of a guy like David that so loved and respected the people around him? Someone should be able to insult you and think, ah, oh, you know, he didn't mean it. Someone should be able to ignore you and say, oh, yeah, he probably didn't see me. Someone should be able to just snap at you some, and you go, ah, oh, he's probably just having a bad day. You know what that, that's called love. These are people, they walk free. Nothing bugs them. They don't get mad at people. They don't walk around with wounds and things. And they don't have problems forgiving people because to them, there's nothing to forgive. That's the way you should do this. We believe in the forgiveness of sins. You really walk in this. You don't have to forgive anybody. Because you don't write down any of their wrongs. Somebody rips you off, that's the end of it. Somebody ticks you off, that's the end of it. Someone bites your head off, that's the end of it. You don't know, carry this stuff with you and repeat it over and over and over again. Stop. Proverbs 19.11, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Do you overlook offenses? Or do you write them down? Do you take a note? Do you take out your camera? Do you take a picture of the offense? You save it. Put it on your Facebook. Look, I was offended. I was in second By the way, Facebook, of all the irritating things in the world. <laughs> I got a Facebook. that We're on live Facebook right now. The people who come on my Facebook and get offended by something I say. Well, you a big baby. <laughs> you don't like something I say. Push the button. Unfollow. <laughs> That's all you got to do, right? Unfollow. But no, they feel obligated to confront you and insult you. And then they get mad when I push. Delete. <laughs> And I ban them. Then they come back on as another name. <laughs> they do. I just had this happen this morning. This pinheaded lady. I hope you're listening. <laughs> no, I do. And I don't even have to forgive her because I don't care. I just delete you. That's all. And she says, I think it's so insulting that you ban and delete people. I just went, delete. <laughs> Being on my Facebook is not a right in the Constitution. It's a privilege. You come into my house and insult me, I show you the door. <laughs> but I'm not going to walk out wounded by that. And where's the respect? Look how much David respected Saul. There's no respect for the ministry anymore. There's not. These pinheads who get on, they'll come after me, a pastor. And you may not, first of all, I'm not even your pastor. Stick it. <laughs> 
does this? Who does? There's all kinds of pastors I listen to and I think they're just crazy. I don't get on there and say, you know, you're a terrible man of God. Let me show you the scripture straight. Only a pure, arrogant pinhead would write another pastor to rebuke him and straight, no respect. This kind of respect that David had for Saul, man, that's virtually non-existent today. Pastors have to struggle. In most churches, they get all kinds of politics and they get all over and they vote them out of office. The good news is you can't vote me out. <laughs> we don't play that game here. Besides, I'd quit before you ever voted me out, man. I, I got other things I could be doing. Goodness gracious. Quit taking offense to everything. We believe in the forgiveness of sins and we should believe it to the point that we don't really have to forgive anybody. Because we don't take offense. Someone said nasty something, you just you blow it off. Just blow it off. And if you hear from someone else that someone did, blow off their thing that they didn't blow off. And tell them you need to blow it off. Don't let somebody else get you so mad because you heard something third hand. I don't understand third hand offenses. I don't understand it. These are people who are looking for offense. They're just looking for a reason to get ticked off. They're just trying to find, there's got to be a reason in here somewhere. I know there's, there's got to be a reason down in there. I know there's something in there. There's got to be in there. I just... All you got to do is hear someone else who heard something that their cousin heard from a brother that was related to a sister of hers next to a cousin who lived across the street from a guy who was offended. And now they're all upset. Stop. Let it go, let it go. 